The inconsistency of my videos lately is very sad, but I'm getting better. Today is the 65,000 mile review of my 2016 Ford Focus ST. If you're new to the channel, if this is one of the first videos you've seen of mine, um, I have a 2016 Focus ST and I also have a 2018 BMW M2. Today's video is strictly on this car. I always bring updates on anything that breaks on it, upgrades that I do, detailing, wear and tear, um, and then just my constant review of the car uh, that I've been doing for over four years now. So today I'm gonna start with the outside of the car, uh, move along to the engine, talk about the interior of the car and wear and tear. Normally for these videos, I will get the car all cleaned up, take some glam shots, do a big intro and all that type of stuff. But this time I'm leaving it as is. Like this is what the car looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. I drive this car every single day. I do between 1,000 and 2,000 miles a month. Last year I did 19,700 and some miles. Uh, so I do a decent amount of driving in it. And of course, I say in one of my videos, I do a lot of driving, which to me, I think 20,000 miles is a lot of driving in a year. And someone goes, that's nothing. I drive 45,000 miles in a year. Like there's always that person. Starting with the outside of the car, the main thing that has worn on my ST is the front bumper. Now, there are, everyone out there says the paint on Fords is not great, it chips, it's very thin, and I don't disagree with that. But one thing to note for where I live, which is Phoenix, Arizona, is there are rocks and debris all over the road. And it's not necessarily that the roads are bad or they're not like dirty or anything, but on the sides of the roads, there are these little rocks and when accidents happen, when there's construction, these come out onto the road and they are kicked up. I just replaced my fifth windshield. I'm on my sixth windshield now on the Focus ST. Luckily, I have a zero deductible glass coverage, um, but that's, I mean, I've broken windshields and it, it just sucks. And the front of my bumper is also a testament to how rough the debris is on these roads. So to combat that, I would have, I think I should have done a clear bra, but I was just at the time to spend almost $2,000 uh, is what I was quoted to get it done on the entire front of the car, which is a lot in hindsight because I got my uh, M2 done for 1800 and that included uh, the entire hood, the entire front bumper and some other things. And that also included getting the tint done. I got my tint and all of that done by Dynamic Tint in Tempe, Arizona. Tyler took care of me, he did an amazing job. They do really nice work there, and I highly recommend them. I should have gotten that done. Now, I grew up in Western Pennsylvania in the Pittsburgh area, and if I lived there, I don't know that I would do paint protection film. And the reason for that is because the roads just aren't as packed and busy, but at the same time, if you're getting a, an expensive car or a car that you wanna keep for a long time, that's gonna be the best way to get it done. And you, at first, it will hurt paying as much as it costs, but it's gonna be worth it. Even when I'm cleaning my car, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm, white, I'm, I'm uh, scrubbing over the paint protection film. I don't have to worry about scratching it or anything. It's self-healing. Uh, I used Expel, so it's just a really nice thing to have for peace of mind. So if you're getting a new ST or an ST that is just really nicely specced or an RS or Fiesta or whatever you're getting, I would recommend that because over the life of the car, you're gonna be happy you've had it. At this point, I have to sand down and repaint the front bumper if I wanna get it back. So I might do that at some point. I might do a full paint correction on the car and then have someone respray the front bumper. I just haven't made a decision on it yet if that's worth doing or not just because I'm gonna be driving this car so much. Some other things to note are the headlights here. You'll see in these shots that the headlights are uh, there, there's like some wear in areas. I'm gonna get those refinished and covered in Expel. These headlights are a thousand dollars a piece to replace. Very expensive, uh, just because there's mechanisms in them. In them for when I turn the wheel, uh, they point point and shoot, which is really nice. And I think that is specific to the ST2 and ST3 packages. Uh, don't quote me on that but it's something that you can look into when buying your ST. I've talked to some ST owners that have ST1s and they talk about how cool the headlights are on this and they didn't even realize that that was an option. So if that's important to you, uh, I make sure you, you know about that going into buying one. 
there are a couple door dings that I'm going to fix eventually, but the paint's in good shape uh, everywhere else around the car. There's one area on the roof here that has uh, some little, a little dent. I don't know what hit the car. Um, I remember it happening. I just don't know actually what hit the roof of the car, but it was the loudest sound ever. Uh, and it left a little scuff on the roof that has for the most part come out, but I, I don't think I'm going to uh, get it repaired just because it's minor and kind of out of sight. You also note uh, my wheels are in nice shape. My wheels have, I always take care of my wheels. I've never curbed them or anything like that. Uh, so what I ended up doing was buying a used set of uh, Rado Gray wheels uh, to replace the stock ones that came on the car. I replaced the, ex I bought the exact same wheels, what I'm saying. And the reason I did that is because I really like the OEM spec uh, wheels. I like how they look. It kind of flows with the car. They're more of a European feel for the premium wheels or more of a uh, US pony car look. So I was just going, I just like the, the, the look of the stock wheel. I am considering other wheels. I know you guys want to see me do more upgrades on the car. I get it. It can be frustrating and the, how slowly I upgrade my car. But my goal was to buy the M2, buy a secondary car. Um, and so that's why I was uh, saving all my money for. So I, I do have some plans this year for the ST. Might, might even do a wrap at some point, maybe to uh, you know protect the paint a little bit more. We will see. Wheels are in excellent shape, and yeah, for 200 bucks, I got a set of all four. The funny thing is, if you go to Ford and you uh, and you want to buy these wheels, they're like $600 a piece. So they're very expensive wheels. But if you're buying them secondhand, they're so cheap. Or if you have a set, it's like hard to get rid of them because uh, nobody wants to pay the money for them. That's the exterior of the car after 65,000 miles. Uh, paint protection film. If you're anal about, you know what could happen to your car from road debris um, but for the most part it's been it's it's in nice shape the paint I've always done hand wash on my car it has been through the wash a couple times just because I've been I take it to the dealership I say don't wash it and they wash it so that has happened a couple times and there's a couple swirls on the car uh, that I'd be able to fix with a paint correction it's just it's just annoying but the exterior of the car, it still looks great. Uh, I love the color that I have. There's, again, there's some wear on it, but for the most part, it is in great shape, and that's just, you know, hand washing it, keeping it as, as clean as I possibly can, and I haven't done anything visually to the exterior minus the mud flaps that I have up front. They're the ZL1 mud guards. Um, I'll have a link in the description below to where I got those. I'm not sure if they still make them but they're very subtle and they protect from rocks shooting up on the side of the car. There are some that go in the back that I have as well, but I don't have them installed yet. So eventually I may do that and obviously I'll make a video on it. Moving on to the motor in the car. Not a whole lot to say here. In a recent video that you can watch in the card at the top of your screen, there were two codes that were going off in my car and I said I was gonna do a follow-up video to fixing them. Um, and one of the great things about my channel and this the community that, that is around the Focus ST is every time I post an issue with my car, an upgrade or anything like that, everyone, someone always has a good suggestion as to what it might be, how to fix it, and the information within the comments of my videos is very good. The comments are always really positive and nice feedback and it's a great place to learn about your car or if you're looking to buy one, things to look out for. Uh, so really appreciate your guys' knowledge and paying attention to these videos because it helps all of us, especially me, to then make a video on it and follow up. But the two codes that were being thrown, they just went away. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what it was. If they come up again, I will let you know. Uh, but they're gone right now and I'm just letting it be that way. One was like a low boost code and then the other was like an EVAP code. It was it was weird. I, I don't know exactly. Turn right onto East Baseline Road. You have to look up the codes to get more information on them. But those have gone away. Other than that, the engine has been great. I had a radiator failure, but that was that was uh, a tech dropped uh, some bolt in between the radiator. Let's see, between the radiator and the intercooler, and the vibrations and bumps and driving every day eventually wore a hole in the radiator, which caused the leak, and my. Uh, the car just stopped running. It says engine too hot to run, service now. Turn right onto East Baseline Road. 
And if you want to watch that video, just check the card at the top of your screen. Uh, you can watch uh, me describe exactly what happened. Really the only failures that have gone on with the engine. I'd like to say, you know, some of it's luck, some of it's just, some of it's me just doing the right things. I've always put 91 fuel in it, so I've always had the right fuel, and I've only done Ford tuning. So I've not done any uh, performance tuning that's outside that's outside of Ford. So I have the Ford Performance Calibration. If you're interested in that, check the card at the top of your screen. Really anything that I'm talking about, I highly recommend if you have a Focus ST or if you're looking to buy one, subscribe if you want to. I'm not gonna force anyone to subscribe, but check out the playlist that I have on my Focus ST because there is so much information in there. I think there's, I don't even remember how many videos I've made at this point. It's over 140, I think, on specifically on this car. So you're gonna learn something if you watch those videos, especially how to on the upgrades and everything like that. But it's been a great motor. Sounds so good, and I do have the Ford Performance Sport exhaust. Uh, that is a Borla exhaust, and I think Ford Performance takes it. Shut the fuck down. So I think Ford essentially took that exhaust and rebranded it. It says Ford Performance on the muffler. It says Ford Performance on the chrome exhaust tips. They're four and a half inch tips. There is no drone with this exhaust. That's for me, driving this car daily, there's no way I could put up with a straight piped Focus ST exhaust. It's so loud, so obnoxious, and I just love the way that this thing looks. It has an OEM fit, OEM sound, especially when you're outside the car and you hear a Focus ST with this exhaust. It sounds so good. It has the purple, perfect amount of burbles. Um, it sounds good when you open the car up. It's loud when you want it to be. It's quiet when you need it to be. That's what I've always said about it. I highly recommend it, and I do also have a video uh, showing the install of this exhaust, etc. cetera. Uh, Ford actually has a lot of performance parts that if you're not willing to upgrade the car yourself and you want it to be under warranty, a lot of Ford shops will put the upgrades on for you. So they put my exhaust and my front motor mount on. They did put the motor mount on upside down, so I later had to go fix that. Um, but they will do it for you, and that's pretty unique because a lot of car manufacturers don't have a huge aftermarket selection of parts. And the fact that Ford does and will warranty them is awesome. I also think, I, as I've made so many videos and done research, a lot of people are very concerned about, is this going to void my warranty? Uh, and you will have to look at the, I, I'm gonna say this wrong, but the Magnin Mucin Auto Act. And what that says is, is the part that the part that's failing, if that's directly caused by an upgrade that you put on, then the warranty is void. But if something is failing in my, if, if I have a cracked head or cylinder head or, or something fails, they can't blame it on my aftermarket exhaust because that has nothing to do with that. So it has to be in direct correlation with what's failing to what you upgraded. And that's how you will void your warranty. So. If you're worried about that, think about that. Okay, is this air filter going to cause my wheel to fall off? No, it's not. So that's not gonna void your warranty. So you just have to think about things downstream from the upgrade that you're putting on and how what that could affect. If you're worried about that, if you don't have the skills, you don't have the time, you don't have the tools, all that stuff, take it to the dealership, they will put on it. Yeah, it's a little expensive, but then you at least have the peace of mind that you're looking for. In conclusion with the motor, um, it's been great. I need to clean it up a little bit more, but other than that, it's uh, it's been a great motor. It's been efficient. Um, and one other thing that I will add to it is I, all, I never drive the car hard uh, when it's not warmed up. So if the, the water and the oil, or, or sorry, if the oil is it has to be like just under half for me to be like, okay, now I'm gonna drive it hard. Um, I won't I won't drive it hard if, if it's not. The car will also uh, limit the boost that it puts out. If you drive it hard when it's cold, um, it's gonna, it won't feel like it's very powerful because they're throttling back the power to protect the motor. So that's just another thing. I'm just always cautious with it. I'm not driving like a clown all the time and it's been a reliable motor. Now that we're just parked and sitting here, let's take a look at the interior of the car. Uh, there's the exact mileage, 66,000, 
79 miles. And I just cleaned out the interior. I always keep the interior pretty clean. My book bag here, <clears throat> a couple things down there. I've just been very cautious about this area, making sure it doesn't get dinged up, nicked up. Because if I ever do go to sell this car, uh, which I know if I do, you guys will absolutely lose your minds. Um, but if I ever do go to sell it, it's going to be, the interior is perfect. Uh, it's in really good shape. The seats are in great shape. There's no r crazy creasing or anything like that. They look good. Uh, the plastics along the side down here, um, they're all very clean. There's no nicks or scuffs. The carbon fiber's in good shape. Initially, when I got the car, this actually was coming off here, like split here. So they it took them about two months for to get this specific part in, but they got it and they replaced it. And ever since then, it's been good. Overall, the carbon fiber in the ST3, and especially this shifter, I just love the way it finishes the interior on the gauge cluster up here. It just looks really nice, because normally it's just a plastic backing, and it's not, I don't know, this is just more visually appealing, and it looks really clean to me. Also, I was worried about this, like, rubbing off these numbers and the ST logo, but there's obviously some type of clear coat over top that's protecting that and it's in really nice shape. Also, if you're wondering about the heat in the summer and is it gonna be too hot, I'm in one of the hottest places on earth and for some reason, this thing does not get that hot even in the summer. The steering wheel actually gets hotter than this. I don't know why, I have no explanation. Another thing that I saw on one of the forms is someone replaced the stock shifter that comes on the ST uh, with the shifter that I have here in the ST3 package and the weight is exactly the same on them. So if you're thinking it's gonna be a weight difference, um, it's not gonna be. I don't know if I pointed it out already, but here's the carbon fiber on the emergency brake. That also looks good. Um, but the seats and everything else overall looks really nice in this car. The only cut that I have in the seats is right here. It's very minor. And the reason that is because someone smashed this window in and stole a bunch of stuff out of my car in California. If you're interested in that video, if you want to see my pain, click the, tar click the card at the top of your screen. You can check that out. But this car is the interior, especially in the ST3 package. Uh, in 2015, they did a refresh on the Focus ST in the US. So for the 13 and 14 models, they have a different front bumper, rear bumper, steering wheel. There's a lot that they upgraded in the 15 plus models that I think is absolutely worth it going for. Uh, little things down to the motor mount in the 13 models. It's upgraded stock now to the electric. Uh, rear motor mount which makes a big difference and then I went further and upgraded it to the Mountain rear motor mount which helps with torque steer and all of that so that's that's a huge upgrade but I mean all of the windows are automatic so if I press this down it goes down all the way whoops now see that does happen sometimes it's you should be able to just hit it once and it goes down sometimes it doesn't work that well. There it did, but on this one it didn't. So, but what I'm trying to say is just nice features to have that at all four windows. Uh, this is for adjusting your mirrors, lock button. Um, I don't know, it, they just really simplified it. There used to be a ton of buttons here in the 13, 14 models that they've fixed. Uh, I don't ever use these two buttons. Um, I'm just trying to think, I sometimes will hit this, but mainly I'm on the steering wheel here using these, uh, going through these settings. 26 and a half miles per gallon average. Trip timer, looks like I need fuel soon. Uh, so there's there's a lot of good uh, menus here. I just always keep it on the digital speed. That way it's easy for me to just look down and see how fast I'm going. The screen is great. It's an eight inch touch screen display. But it's a... Uh, Fast and Furious song comes on. Yeah, I just think the infotainment system's great. The sound system's good. I do have the the ST3, like I've said 47 times in this video, so that means I have in the trunk, I have the Sony subwoofer, and it sounds really good. And the seats overall have come to grow on me, but they, like if you're any bigger, I can't imagine it being comfortable if you're overweight or really tall. I just can't imagine that being comfortable. So I'm like, I'm six feet tall, I'm 170 pounds. So, and and like up here, the, the main issue with the seats is this right here is too tight. This needs to be let out, like it just needs to be wider. And also these side bolsters could be just, just wider. 
That way, if you're driving on a track or if you're on a curvy road, you still get the lateral support that you need, but it's not cramping you when you're just on a straight road. So that, that what I say is, is a complaint. Steering wheel has a little bit of wear right here, right along here and up here. Uh, new steering wheel is about 350 bucks. Might be worth it. But this steering wheel, I will say, is amazing. The flat bottom here could be a little thicker, but for the most part, it feels really nice um, and has lasted well for driving it every day and especially being in the heat. Um, I did add a windshield tint here. It's uh, CIR 70 from SunTech. So it, it basically the reason I got that was to protect the dashboard from uh, just UV protection and then it reduces some heat as well. That being the biggest window, it does reduce the heat a lot uh, in the summer. So that's the interior. It looks great and I think for the technology that this car has, it is becoming an amazing value for for how much they've depreciated so if you can you can easily get them under twenty thousand dollars and usually fifteen thousand sixteen thousand dollars depending on mileage and all that type of stuff but it's been a reliable car and if you take care of the interior properly if you care about how you're getting in and out of the car that makes a huge difference down the road a lot of people comment on how nice my seats look and that's just because I don't like just flop into the car and crush the bolsters. I always take my time um, and get in slowly and get out slowly. And yeah, that's about it. Date skinny girls, you know. So that concludes the 65,000 mile update on my Focus ST. Is this car reliable? Yes, it's been a great long-term car. Uh, I know Ford is not known for reliability, but this motor seems to be reliable. I've not had any electrical issues yet. Um, it's efficient, it's spacious. It, well, spacious to a point. A WRX is more spacious, but this has a little more practicality when you need to haul something big. You can fold the seats down and have the hatch. But like this past weekend, I had six friends in town, so getting four of us in here to go to the golf course is extremely cramped. You have to fold a seat down, stack clubs. Um, so, you know, something like a WRX, you're able to get four sets of clubs and four people in there pretty comfortably, whereas this, you're not. You know, it has its benefits. Ed, and there's has its downsides, but overall, I think you know if you were looking at this compared to a WRX, the only reason I would get a WRX over the Focus ST is because of all-wheel drive. Like if you lived in Colorado, if you lived in an area where there's a lot of snow, I think getting a WRX would be the way to go. But again, throwing winter tires on this that would that would solve that issue uh, much better. I think the engine in this is more exciting. I also think the chassis is tuned better, and I've driven both of them. So that's just my personal take on it. I know that's gonna trigger people, but that's just how I feel. Thank you all for watching. I am gonna have plenty more videos. Probably one of the next videos that I do on the ST is going to be upgrades that got better with time. So that's gonna be one of the next ones coming up and I'm just gonna to try to get consistently posting more. I wanna talk about the Mustang Mach-E and how it can hold a thousand chicken wings. Uh, I just have a lot of videos that I need to get going on, but it's all coming soon. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. Drop a like if you're still with me in the video. That helps me promote these videos more. And if you're watching my videos all the way to the end, that helps as well. Closing in on 20,000 subscribers. I'm really excited for that. Thanks for all the support and we'll see you next time.